Today on Silver Threads, we're joined by a special guest, Miss Creepy Tales. She has her own channel where she reads true scary stories. Links for her channel are in the description. Check her out. Now on to the story. Today, I saw a man like a tree. I was sitting on my back porch, staring off at the edge of the woods, and there was this guy just standing there, chewing around on the bark of a tree. That's what reminded me of what happened when I was nine. When I was nine years old, I didn't have a lot of friends. My family lived out in the countryside, and the only neighbors we had were that grumpy old guy who worked the farm next to our house, and whatever critters were running around in the woods nearby. My mom and dad were confident in my ability to watch out for myself, so they often left me to my own devices. A little too often, actually. They would sometimes tell my older brother to watch out for me, but he could care less and would run off after a while too. This is exactly how things started the day I met the man in the well. My mom had told Joshua, my older brother, to go outside and play with me. It was a nice day, so I was kind of happy we'd get up to something fun. I had a ball which I took with me when we started on our way over to the tree line. Wanna play hide and seek? Josh asked, and I nodded excitedly. Okay, you first. Go stand behind that tree and count to a hundred, and don't look. I did as he told me, holding my ball between my feet as I waited with my eyes closed. When I had finally counted to one hundred and turned around, Josh was gone. I immediately started to look for him, thinking he couldn't have gotten too far, but he was nowhere to be seen. My search led me deeper into the woods, and by the time the trees had gotten so large and dense that there was barely any sunlight reaching the ground anymore, I was starting to get frightened. I kept calling my brother's name, telling him I didn't want to play anymore and that he had to come out. I received no answer, though. A few more minutes of looking around later, I began to cry. I didn't go back home or even leave the forest to do so. I just plopped down on the spot and started wailing and screaming. I still had my ball with me, and in a fit of anger, sadness, and despair, I hurled it away from me. It flew beyond where I could see, and soon an odd, hollow noise followed it, almost as if it had landed on stone. I didn't really care until I heard a voice call out to me from somewhere in the underbrush. At first, I thought it had to be my brother who had decided he had scared me enough and wanted to apologize. But I realized quickly that I didn't belong to anyone I knew. It was deeper, like it belonged to someone my dad's age, but it was also a lot less gruff. Dad would usually sound a bit intimidating whenever he'd speak, but whoever was answering my cries didn't. Hello? Are you alright? I think I've got your, uh, whatever this is. I tried to respond, but nothing but a strange little croak came out. Um, uh, hello? The voice rang out again. I hurriedly staggered to my feet and tried to follow its sound. Where are you? I called out, stifling a sob. Oh, uh, hard to tell. I can't see much. I'm in a well. It's not overgrown or anything. If you keep looking ahead, you might find it. I did as the stranger told me, and kept marching forward in almost a straight line. I rounded a few bushes and trees, and lo and behold, there it was. The large, withered round well stood right in the middle of a sunny little clearing, which looked so much less threatening than the rest of the dark forest. I walked up to it and bent over the edge gripping onto the upper layer of clunky, stacked-up old stones that formed it to steady myself as I peered inside. There was a man staring up at me. I remember giggling a little when I first saw him. He looked so weird. He had long, bleach-blonde hair, and he was wearing an overcoat that looked to be a deer hide, one of those reddish-brown ones with white speckles. He was holding my pink ball in both hands, holding it up so I could take a look at it. Of course, I wouldn't have been able to grab it from where I was standing. The pit was way too deep. This is yours, I suppose? 
I nodded. Can I have it back? He smiled. Sure, catch. With that, he threw the ball straight into the air, and I leaned over the edge to try and grab it, only for the man to start. Watch out! He yelled, and I quickly stumbled back. The ball fell right back down into the well, but I thankfully stayed on the surface. When I hesitantly leaned against the edge again, the stranger was frowning apologetically. I'm so sorry, I didn't throw it right. You have to be really careful, else you'll be sitting down here with me in no time. Not that there wouldn't be enough space for the two of us. Like, I'm sure there's worse wells to be stuck in, but, like, even if it's a nice one, it's still pretty crappy. He threw the ball once more. This time, it sailed over the edge of the pit and almost right into my arms. Thanks. I said. So you're trapped down there? Yes. I tried to hide from someone, but now I can't get out. It was a bit short-sighted on my end. Who did you try to hide from? A concerned look washed over the man's features. He shook his head. Unimportant. He muttered. What are you doing out here? Aren't you a bit too, uh, I don't know, tiny just to walk around on your own? My brother said we'd play hide and seek, but, but he just left me here. I explained, my voice cracking as I remembered why I'd been crying in the first place. That sucks. Sorry to hear that. Your brother sounds like a jerk. I mean, I have a sister too. I know what it's like to not get along sometimes, but that's a bit extreme. I nodded. I don't think he likes me at all. I confessed. Maybe he does, but simply doesn't know yet. Sometimes, you don't realize how much someone means to you until later. The man replied. I merely sighed and hung my head. He smiled softly. Hey, what's your name? Linda. I muttered, unable to bring myself to stop looking downcast. It's good to meet you, Linda. I'm Zvi. I had never heard that name before, but I remember thinking it sounded nice. Are you going to stick around some more? I'd appreciate the company. How about I try to get you out of there instead? I offered. Zvi's eyes lit up. Could you? I shrugged. I don't know if it'll work, but I can try. I sat my ball down and started to look around, not sure if there was anything close by I could use to pull him out of the pit. I soon noticed that one of the trees beside the well was made up of three long, but relatively slender branches which all seemed to grow towards the sun. It must have been a pretty young tree, so I felt a little bad for doing what I did next. I grabbed one of the three branches, placed my foot in the middle where they all sprouted out from, and began to bend it. I pressed down on it with all my might, trying to get it to break off. The tree, however, didn't go down without a fight. I ended up having to twist the branch while at the same time slamming my foot down on it again and again before finally, the resilient wood began to splinter. Croning, I gave it one last strong pull. When the branch gave in, I was sent staggering backwards. It had to have been around three times my size. I quickly broke off the thin, leafy twigs it sported on its upper end before carrying it over to the well. I dropped it there, needed to catch my breath before going to business. I got a long branch! I announced in between little gasps. Wiping my sweat laced forehead, I peered down into the well, only to find that Svi's eyes were glued to a spot on the stone wall. His whole body had tensed, and the way he was breathing suggested he was sniffing the air. Svi? He spun around, his eyes now wide and filled with fear. Hide! He hissed. What? What's going on? Look, it's coming! Quick, get away! He sounded pleading, almost desperate. What's coming? I whimpered, feeling my heart beating faster as my eyes darted around the clearing. Please, just hide! If it finds you, it'll... His voice broke off, and he shuddered. It's getting close! Hurry! This finally snapped me out of it. I turned towards one of the large bushes. I grabbed my ball, kicked the branch away from the well, and jumped right into the mess of thorns and leaves. I stifled a squeak as the twigs scraped and tore at my skin, 
leaving scratches on my arms, legs, and face. I tried to cover up the bright pink color of my ball by wrapping my arms around it and bending over it as best as I could in the thorn bush. I couldn't see a lot of what was going on outside, but there were a few spots where the leaves weren't dense enough to obscure my vision. I could see the well, but Zvi wasn't making a single sound. It was then that I noticed that the whole forest had fallen silent. Not even the birds were singing anymore. All of a sudden, a loud growl arose from this false tranquility. Twigs snapping and leaves crunching announced the arrival of something else. Something big. I pressed my hands over my mouth, trying to stay quiet and hoping for my breathing to slow. I watched in horror as the thing emerged from the trees and slowly lumbered out onto the clearing. I had never seen a bear in my life before at that point, but even though I recognized this animal to be one, it wasn't at all like those I knew from the nature documentaries. Maybe it was just because this one was not behind a TV screen, but its sight alone instilled a feeling of terror within me. It was enormous. I told myself I wouldn't know it anyways, but deep down, I knew something was wrong with this animal from the start. It was too big, its paws too large, and its claws too long. Its fur was dark, almost black, and it was matted with dust, mud, and dirt. There was a strange glow to its eyes, and it was baring its teeth as it drew closer. I was certain I would die. I felt my eyes fill with tears. It would rip apart the bush and bite my head off, I was sure of it. But before anything of the sort could happen, the bear stopped in its tracks. It sat down and let out another growl, almost a roar. And then suddenly, it began to shrink. Its paws slimmed, turning into hands connected to muscular but distinctly human-looking arms. Its snout flattened into its face and was replaced by a normal nose and mouth. Its fur vanished until nearly all that was left of it was on top of the head of the woman who was now standing in the bear's place. The rest was hanging off her shoulders and lower body in the shape of a ragged coat and loincloth. The woman's dark eyes twinkled with expectation as she began to look around the clearing. I was staring at her with wide eyes, dazed and in complete disbelief. She reached up to rub her eyes and scratch her head, her hair being just as matted and black as the fur of the bear had been, before stretching her arms, almost leisurely. I know you're here somewhere, she called out in a sing-songy voice. She turned towards the well and my heart sank. It was then that I realized she wasn't looking for me at all. I slowly began to maneuver my way backwards out of the bush, hoping to get as much space between me and that lady as possible. You smell like shit and fear and sweat, she went on. Her voice was raspy and deep. Despite it being female, it reminded me of my father's. I continued backing out of the underbrush, a plan beginning to form in my mind. I wrapped my hands tighter around the ball, and just as the woman moved in and got ready to look over the edge of the well, I threw it at a tree behind her. The ball bounced off, the noise causing her to jump and turn around. I instantly ducked back behind the bush, praying she hadn't spotted me. The ball was now rolling innocently towards her. Who's there? She shouted, sounding both alarmed and angry. She walked up to the ball and picked it up from the ground, only to drop it once again. I watched as her body began to grow large and furry again, her bones making disgusting cracking noises. When she was a bear again, she took off into the thicket, the sound of her heavy footfalls fading into the distance. As soon as I was certain she was far enough away, I burst out of the thorn bush and hurried towards the well. Zvi was cowering inside, his face contorted with fear. He looked up at me with wide eyes. Did you do that? He uttered. I nodded. I myself was in awe of the fact that my plan had worked at all. The ball had been meant to be a distraction at best. I hadn't expected anything like this to happen. To be honest, I wouldn't have known what to do had it failed. I picked up the large stick and dragged it over to the well before lowering it inside, careful not to hit Svi. Don't you think it'll break? He asked. It's kinda bendy. Svi gave the branch another uncomfortable glance. Well, uh, 
I guess I can't get more stuck. Please hold on to it. Just hurry. I replied. It won't break if you're quick. Zvi nodded, took a deep breath, and backed up before charging at the stick. He jumped, grabbing onto the highest spot he could reach. I groaned as I struggled to keep it in place as his weight began to pull on it from below. The wood twisted in my hands, painfully scraped my palms, but I didn't let go. Occasionally pressing his fingers and the tips of his shoes into the cracks of the stone wall for support, Zvi heaved himself further up until he was finally close enough to grab onto the edge. I held out one hand to him while still holding the stick with the other. That same second, his foot must have slipped on the stone and he sank back a little, but I grabbed him by the wrist at the very last moment. He clung to the edge of the wall with all his strength, groaning as he attempted to swing his legs over it. I moved my other hand to his wrist too, and began to pull. This gave him enough momentum to roll over and safely, yet not very gracefully, land in the grass beside me. He was panting heavily, and it took him a little while to get to his feet. Only when he did, did I realize how tall he actually was. Much taller than both my parents. He was towering above me, but somehow, he wasn't intimidating at all. Let's go, he told me. I'll stay with you until you're out of the woods. So we started walking. After a while, he broke the silence again. Thank you so, so much. He said softly, I don't have any ways of repaying you, but trust me, I will never forget this. Maybe I'll get the chance to help you out someday. I'll keep an eye out for then. Will you be okay? I asked, gazing into the direction the bear had run off to. I guess so. I'll survive. He chuckled wryly. Good call, by the way. She's really scared of humans. Me, not so much. I think I'm pretty much in touch with that side of me. I've been thinking, maybe I should be more afraid. That well didn't build itself after all, and it's a damn death trap. But you coming along has me rather confident you guys are alright. Are all animals like... like you? Birds too? He laughed quietly. No, there's, uh, there's nothing you can compare us to. Don't even try to wrap your head around it, it's uh, complicated. I nodded. Suddenly, he perked up, walking over to where my ball was lying and picked it up. He handed it to me with a gentle smile on his face. He then turned, as if he was getting ready to leave. I had one last question, though. The bear and you, what are you really? Animals or people? Uh, neither, he replied before he got on all fours, his arms and legs growing long and slender his speckled brown coat creeping its way over the rest of his body until it covered him in its entirety, and large antlers sprouting from both sides of his head. The buck turned to face me one last time, before taking off back into the woods in large leaps. No one noticed when I came home covered in scratches and bruises that day. I didn't need them to either. I was still best at applying band-aids myself anyways. It's been a long time since all this happened. My parents passed away not too long ago. They never moved away from that old house in the middle of nowhere, and they left it to me in their will. Up until now, I was thinking of selling it. Not sure if I changed my mind, but I might at least stick around to see if V's still alive. Maybe it was him chewing around on that tree. Or maybe just a friend of his. If you guys liked the video, please subscribe. Also, leave a like and uh, press the bell thingy if you don't want to miss any of my future videos. Thank you very much to our special guest, uh, Miss Creepy Tales. She did a fantastic job voicing Linda. Please go check her channel out. Her stuff is awesome. She covers true scary stories. Links for that are down in the description. If you prefer the podcast option, check out the Silver Threads podcast where I upload every episode. Available on most popular podcast platforms. Any story submissions should be sent to storiesforsilverthreads at gmail.com. Now thank you all for listening, and I'll see you all again next time with another story. <laughs>